niggas? You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Monthly Movie Recap. It's been like, what, two or three months since I've actually done one? I kind of thought this would happen, but I went with the title anyway, because that's what I decided to do. Because I tried to do it monthly, but uh, since it's been so long, there's a lot of shit I've seen. Uh, so plenty of movies to talk about. Well, I wrote down a list of the movies I've seen since the last time, but uh, I don't know what the fuck I did with it. Uh, but it's been quite a few movies, so I saw a movie called Whiplash. Uh, we'll start with that. Really good movie, great drama. It was from the same director as La La Land, which I actually saw La La Land as well. I don't think I talked about that last time, because I think this, I saw it after that as well. La La Land I liked, but only after it really started to get some conflict going. Once we got to, like, the second half of the movie, I started to like La La Land a little bit more. And not a lot to say about La La Land itself. It was a musical... It was about following your dreams and uh, focusing on yourself, which I can get behind. It wasn't my favorite, but I did like it from the, the first bit of conflict onwards. Uh, Whiplash, however, from the same director, fucking amazing. It's about a guy who is becoming a drummer, and it's like his dream to become a successful drummer, which to me normally wouldn't be a big draw because I'm not really into music, but it's a great drama and it's about someone following his dream and persevering. And it's also got some really insightful stuff in it. It has, it has J.K. Simmons in it, who, if you don't know, plays J. Jonah Jameson in the Spider-Man movies. And he's fucking great in this. He's crazy and strict and over the top and makes people work themselves until they're literally bleeding and crying and a mess on the floor. And he's super harsh. But his mentality behind it is what makes him so interesting of a character. Because his whole mindset is... If he doesn't push people the way he does, then if these people have the potential to be great, then they won't be great if he doesn't push them. He even goes on this big long speech about how the two most dangerous words in the English language are, are good job. And I can see some truth behind that. I think that you do need to kind of push yourself. But I also do think that there is a limit, and I do think he ultimately goes too far in the movie. But it's a great drama, great characters, and an interesting concept. I thought it was really well done. I really enjoyed it. Um, as I said, I did also enjoy La La Land, but nowhere near as much. The next movie I'm going to talk about is Twisted Pear, which is the most recent Neil Breen movie. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Neil Breen, he is a very incompetent director. All of his movies are considered to be so bad it's good, and a lot of them have very incomprehensible plots. I did a Red Eye Theater on Fateful Findings a little bit a few months back with Corbin. And that's one of Neil Breen's movies as well. But Fateful Findings actually makes sense compared to Twisted Pear. Like, Fateful Findings did not make sense. There's a bunch of shit that doesn't make any sense in it. But Twisted Pear is a whole other level. The vast majority of the movie consists of Neil Breen badly green screening himself on top of stock footage. And the plot doesn't really make any sense. It just kind of jumps from one thing to another. But my god, was it fun. It was an absolute fun ride. It's easily one of my new favorite So Bad It's Good movies, right up there with Fateful Findings as well. Uh, Neil Breen makes Tommy Wiseau seem competent. Tommy Wiseau makes more sense in his movies than Neil Breen does. But Neil Breen also has, like, a huge ego because his fan base props him up by sarcastically telling him he's a genius, and he doesn't have enough awareness to pick up on the fact that it's sarcastic, which I think is also fantastic and wonderful, which is why I love those movies. It is my goal to one day see every single Neil Breen movie. And in Twisted Pair, he plays two characters, uh, two twins, uh, that both have these superpowers. And again, it's really fucking hard to follow. They start going on about all this technological stuff that's just complete and total nonsense, where they say, like, programmable virtual reality, programmable DNA. But, like, you think those things could make sense, but they say them in ways that don't, and say them as if they're just supposed to mean something on their own. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense the way they try to connect them. It's fucking weird, but I love it. It's so fucking stupid. I've also seen Parasite since the last time I've been on here. The Korean, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a thriller, a drama, I guess it's a little bit of both. It's not really a horror movie. For some reason I was led to believe it was a horror movie before. It's absolutely not. Uh, but it's great. It's a movie about this family that's really poor, who one of them gets a job with this rich family, and the rest of them start getting the other people this rich family hires to have all sorts of things happen where they lose their jobs so that they can get their entire family hired. And they start, like, leeching off the rich family and living in their house. 
I won't spoil it, but a bunch of crazy shit happens, and um, the final, like, act of the movie is absolutely batshit crazy, and I love it. Like, it escalates super quickly. Um, I would highly recommend checking Parasite out. I went into it completely blind, which is the way I'd recommend people to do it. I didn't even know as much details as I've given you so far, but it's absolutely phenomenal. Speaking of Korean movies, I've also recently seen Train to Busan, which fucking amazing zombie movie. It's a zombie movie that all takes place within trains and train stations, and there's really good characters. It escalates really quickly. The horror is done really well. It has a great soundtrack. Um, my favorite character, I can never remember any of the characters' names, but we just call him Chad because he's a total fucking Chad. There's literally a scene where he, like, picks up a zombie and rams it into a group of other zombies in order to hold them off. He's fucking cool. I love him. Great movie. I had a great time with it. Um, I think, uh, I think I liked, uh, Train to Busan a little bit more than Parasite, but it's very close. They're both very good movies. And now, since it is December, let's get on to some of the Christmas movies I've seen. Uh, obviously, again, these are only movies I haven't seen previously, hence the monthly movie recap. I saw Christmas Mail, which was a so bad it's good movie. It was absolutely awful. It gave off serious vibes of those really bad Hallmark Christmas movies. Um, my friend showed it to me. We were doing a bad movie night. That's also when we watched Twisted Pear, and I, I showed him the room because he'd never seen that. Uh, but Christmas Mail, it's really stupid. <laughs> Um, I feel like it was the least fun out of the three we watched, uh, but it was the most competent. Um, it was still fun. It was still fun to sit and mock and make fun of, uh, but it's basically about this... It's, it's a really stupid romance where this guy is a mailman who falls in love with this girl who's doing a temporary assignment in the mail office, post office, don't know why I called it the mail office, whatever, in the post office uh, to answer all the letters to Santa, and then, spoiler, not that anyone gives a shit about Christmas mail, but at the end there's like a twist where it turns out that she's Santa's daughter, which is really fucking stupid. And there's a scene in the movie where they have a sprinkle fight and they throw sprinkles at each other, and the daughter calls Spaghetti Miss Sketty because she misses it, so she combines Miss and Spaghetti. It's so stupid. One of my favorite scenes, though, is when the daughter tries to hook up the dad with their elderly neighbor and it's really awkward. That was really funny. There's also a random scene where he walks into, like, this single support group, which is all women, and they ask him when the last time he had sex was, which comes completely out of nowhere and is a lot more raunchy than the rest of the movie. So that was really funny. Uh, and then the other Christmas movies I've seen are Jingle All the Way. That was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with that movie. Crazy movie, over the top, very cheesy and stupid. Arnold Schwarzenegger going around crazy shit happening, uh, trying to get this doll for his son on Christmas, uh, while his neighbor, played by Phil Hartman, uh, rest in peace, love Phil Hartman, absolute classic guy, uh, loved him as Lionel Hutz and Troy McClure in The Simpsons, as well as the monorail guy in Marge vs. the Monorail, uh, but, uh, he plays this douchey neighbor that's trying to steal Arnold's wife, um, and, like, Jake Lloyd, the kid from Phantom Menace who plays young Anakin, is in it. I didn't know he was in any other movies, so that was an interesting treat. But yeah, it was it was something else. Uh, it was it escalates and gets really crazy later on as it goes. Um, there's counterfeit toys. Uh, there's an insane parade scene involving a jetpack. It's fucking nuts. I absolutely love it. Absolutely crazy movie. And then uh, the last Christmas movie that I have seen that I hadn't seen before is Bad Santa, which I didn't expect a whole lot out of. I expected it to just keep, kind of be one of those edgy 2000s comedies, you know, kind of like the stuff you'd see with, like, Seth Rogen or Jonah Hill, which, you know, there's, there's good to be had in those, but they're all kind of the same. Uh, but this, no, absolutely not. This was an amazing movie. I actually thought Bad Santa was fucking... It was hilarious... It had good character development. It actually had some kind of sad moments. It was really interesting. I loved it. It was way better than I expected it to be. Really funny. Um, but it's about this group of criminals who get hired on to do, like, mall Santa stuff, uh, with one of them being the Santa and the other one being the elf. Uh, and, like, they, they get involved in the mall, and then on Christmas Eve, they rob the mall when they're closing down the store. A really funny movie. I've heard there's a sequel. I've heard the sequel sucks. Uh, so I'm probably going to stick away from it. But, like, there's also some stuff where he's taking care of this kid who's got really no one else. And that builds up. I didn't know anything about that when I watched the movie. 
Um, so I thought it was it was also an interesting treat. Very good movie. I absolutely loved it. We watched uh, Jingle All the Way and Bad Santa on a movie night me and two of my friends did here where I showed them It's a Wonderful Life, which they had never seen before, which is my favorite Christmas movie, although it's it's only a Christmas movie, really, in the third act, and even then it's only, like, just that it takes place on Christmas. Like, it is a Christmas movie in that regard, but I've always seen, like, it does tell the whole life of George Bailey, so I've always felt it's much more than just a Christmas movie. I also rewatched Eight Crazy Nights this year. I watch that every year. I showed it to one of my friends as well who's never seen it. But yeah, I think that's all the new movies that I need to recap for this month, which is actually a couple of months. If there's anything else I forgot, I wrote a list. If, if I can find the list, I'll double check it. And if there's anything I missed this time, I'll just mention it in the next video and do it there. Um, I might do dedicated reviews to some of this. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, monthly movie recap, I did start because it is easier to do than full-blown reviews. But I obviously will be doing some full-blown reviews of stuff coming up here in the future. I just need to get some more motivation to do things like that. Like, I'm gonna do Naoki Urasawa's Monster. I need to finish that. I'm on, like, third episode, like, 33 out of 75. But yeah, that's all the movie recap for today. I hope you've enjoyed. This has been Fugitive Red Eye. Have a good one. Toodles. Phew. That sucked. Michael Jackson's semen.